quite some time now. You know, Brandon Spencer and the boys, you know, we've been asking around. Do you got that natural law? Hello, hello. Welcome, folks. This is the One Great Work Warriors. My name is Chris Jansen. Welcome back to another episode. This is a special episode. As you saw the awesome intro, thanks, Derek, for the intro introductory music to today's shitcom, where we're going to talk shit about the shitcoms. And why are we going to talk shit about the shitcoms? Because the shit cons are shitty and um, they're blasting shit all over our society on a daily um, 24 hour basis and clogging up the works of the intelligence and the spiritual understanding of human beings in all kinds of weird and little subtle ways. They suck you in with the laugh tracks and the funny little tunes in the beginning. And, you know, that shit's just always playing in the background. I don't know how many people's houses I've been on where that crap's just playing all the time. Just this crap show, um, kind of a backdrop to everybody's life. But really, um, the One Great Work Warriors have assembled um, today. Brandon Spencer um, got his internet got struck by lightning or something, and he's um, trying to get back on. We hope you can make it to join us. But in the meantime, we got Jerry, Crip Rick. Jim Adams and Derek Bartolicelli, and we're going to discuss shitcoms and their effect on us and life and how that um, affects natural law principles. So, um, Jim, will you be the uh, first up guy? You got something to say about shitcoms? Well, I don't know if I'm the, the best choice for first, but yeah, man, I'll... I'll go for it uh, because this topic kind of tricked me up a bit because I, I never really like, um, like committed to like any one show that I, I don't think like, I'm not like a pop culture kind of person. And like you mentioned the canned laughter, that was always a thing that would like annoy me. Like, so it's like trying to like tell you when you're supposed to laugh and laugh and and when the jokes weren't even funny, I was like, like, why? Like, it was just so annoying. But um, so the one thing that I've come to realize in recent years is, you know, that human beings are programmable. And this, uh, we just grew up with television. And that's definitely a big part of the programming is, you know, the, the television programming. So, you know, when you guys brought up sitcoms, I never really thought of sitcoms so much as being a part of it, but yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's all, all for a reason. I, I know when I was a kid, my parents were pretty strict too. Like, so I know uh, you guys are going to talk about married with children in that, like later on that came up a lot and I wasn't allowed to watch it. <laughs> like I think I was like in seventh or eighth grade when it came out, and it was very popular to your parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was like the anti sitcom, really, like compared to because I didn't even have cable, but I when I went to my grandparents' house, they did have cable because my grandfather watched sports. He wanted uh, ESPN or whatever. So I would watch Nickelodeon and I was allowed to watch that and like all like the old like 50s and 60s, like Leave it to Beaver and all that kind of stuff. So I could totally like th that kind of programming was a little was definitely more wholesome. And then by the time Married with Children came out, that was like the an antithesis of that. And so I could see why my parents didn't want me to, to watch that. Um, one thing that came to mind, I used to love staying up late and then around 11 o'clock every night there was reruns of the the honeymooners and i thought that that show that i love that show um and i was thinking about it you know i have i have some ralph Crampton in me 
I definitely like I've had these like kind of harebrained screen uh screens, uh high in the sky ideas and fail. <laughs> but I, I feel like I have that character programmed into me. So mm. I find that interesting. Um just one more thing I'll pass pass it on, you know, getting back to programming. Um how we this is fairly new the television it's only since like the really the 50s and i was born in 74 so it was uh but we all we all were born into it and we didn't know any different and it's very um you know strange that we don't consider the effect like it has on us so we just think it's normal that it uh it's it's a thing. Like we can't imagine life without it. But it's, if you really stay take a step back and because I, I I did a lot because I I would not watch and see other people watch and like that's fucked up. Like especially now because I don't watch TV at all and uh, the commercials on top of it, the commercials that are in between, the the influence you know and the programming in there just to get you is a big factor too, but I'll pass it off to uh, Jerry. Thanks, Jim. That was great. Thanks for picking this topic, Chris. And uh, as far as Brendan Spencer goes, the show must go on like Lupe Fiasco mm -hmm. song. And um, I think you guys can hear me clearly, so I'm gonna move on. So when you first introduced this topic, Chris, I didn't really give much thought about two sitcoms. And so that's like the programming that was still embedded in me. And now I can realize, I can take a step back and see how I still have programming in me. What else am I unaware of that I've been programmed into to Jim's point? So in this topic of the sitcoms, I also grew up with watching Nickelodeon and I used to pretty much go to sleep watching Drake and Josh or Malcolm in the Middle. And uh, I remember uh, an episode from SpongeBob. I don't need, I don't know if that's a sitcom, but I remember seeing SpongeBob watch TV for like the entire night. And I knew there was something wrong with that. But then I think about me watching him watching TV so it's it's almost like all right i think there has to be a balance when you watch tv but there's also the fine line whether what's good information versus bad information to jim's point we're programmable so we want to uh, feed ourselves with good information so nickelodeon i mean is that really what you know, kids should be watching with the laugh tracks. That's not even funny. I mean, they want you to laugh on purpose. It's it's there because they want you to, you know, be entertained. And I think Brandon was going to touch on that entertainment to enter the mind, the programming, right? It's to keep you docile, to keep you, you know, watching black boxes, black mirrors, keeps you distracted from what's what's uh, what you really need to learn which is essentially how to have a strong mindset how to have a positive mindset how to conquer goals and how to talk to individuals collaborate with one another and essentially get the word out of natural law so i'm just going to leave it there for now and i'll pass it to rick uh thank you and uh, I just want to say welcome all the warriors. And once again, I look forward to these uh, discussions. And hello to everybody in chat and listening. It's great that you guys are all here and joining us for all of these uh, recordings. It's great to, you know, get your guys' feedback on this. And I'm kind of like Jim in this in a, in a way. I, I never watched a lot of sitcoms. So I was kind of always, I was thinking back and I'm like, geez, what did I used to even watch? And Chris brought it up. Like, what did I watch is even when I was younger, like, let's go back really young. And I remember 
seeing shows at, at like Leave It to Beaver, and then I was thought back more, and I was like, wow, I remember seeing shows like um, uh, Happy Days was a big one I remember watching, which is with the Fonz. If anybody rem remembers, I'm definitely dating myself, and <laughs> and another one was Three's Company. <laughs> so I, those are the kind of the ones that I remember that I remember. And I was I came at it when I first started thinking about this. I was looking at it like, okay, we got this. I was just thinking like how we got to those type of shows to where we are now. And it was kind of an inter interesting how it kind of played out the more I thought about it because I thought back to these older shows that I just mentioned. And I'm like, at least back then, there were a couple of them. With, especially with Leave it to Beaver and stuff like Happy Days and that, there was this family structure that this show was built around. It was like a tight family structure. And they, I don't know if you want to say they were trying to promote good values and, and like just a, a different way of showing things like a, like this at uh, life. And I just remember seeing that and it was definitely around this fa these families. And Three's Company, that's another whole topic that was kind of i think where they started going off and, and experimenting because you had a, a guy living with two women but he was supposedly had to play gay because he wasn't allowed to live with the two women if he wasn't and so that's interesting in itself but uh, then i realized the more i thought about it that they even those older shows weren't really showing real life that's what i i kind of realized like even those shows even though they were based around family and it wasn't projecting to me real life as we think about it because there's no perfect family like they would portray like the, there wasn't these perfect families where that i was seeing on the screen when i saw other families that i hung around it was like that's so even those even though they were better than for values and morals and they were kind of it was more more normal than what we're seeing now it was it's interesting how i've just kind of come full circle and realized that it was it's been i've thought about this a lot because I, as I was saying, I haven't really watched a ton, especially newer sitcoms. Uh, I, I do watch a lot of documentaries and I watch, you know, other types of series, but I'm not watching, not much for the comedy ones. So it's just interesting. The big one that I watched was Married with Children, which I'm sure we're going to get into. That one I definitely dove into. I've seen every se uh, season episode uh, multiple times. So I have seen follow through on one. So. Yeah, that's just kind of, I'll leave it at that and add on to it in a bit. But uh, I don't know who wants to take it next. Chris, you want to uh, kind of build on that? I think Derek's up. Okay, Derek's good. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Let's go. You know, you won't find me in some tight red undies, you know, <laughs> acting all, not all masculine like a Ted Bundy or Al. <laughs> <laughs> he was not really my pal, although I, did watch some of those episodes growing up and like <clears throat> it was just so like off centered i wasn't like feeling it although like yeah the laugh track just keeps you entertained in that sense and yeah jerry the the word entertainment etym etymologically means to enter the mind and hold it entre in french means in you know this is all latin based but in france french france fru huh? What about the Olympics? No. <laughs> no, I just live here, by the way. Mais oui, les amis. Um, entre tien mon. Mon is, you know, M-E-N-T, the mind. Tien means to hold in French, or tain in Latin. And then entre, <clears throat> entre, enter the dragon. No, just kidding. Or the, the, the year of the wooden dragon, as we're in. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, Jim, I really love what you said in like just taking it back from the beginning because this is where people need to kind of get it be based off of, right? <laughs> to understand like, okay, where did this come from? Who invented it? And how did it just, you know, evolve from there? And you've noticed the, and I, I spoke about this uh, in a recording for Dissolving the Divide last night with Zerlath the Immortal and uh, just talking about like, you can see from the generational evolution with technology it's like up here yet the the dialogue and the writing of shit comms or whatever the fuck it, it doesn't match this and it's the same with a lot of other television programming we could say that it's on purpose if you go into the works of 
Bill Cooper, where, you know, like the Naval Intelligence, you know, agency and that kind of stuff, which is just a branch of uh, quite a big wicked tree. A wicked tree doing wicked tree, right? Anyways. Stemming back on those, you know, with the words. You're not talking right? about the Hollywood, are you? <laughs> Unholy wood, yeah. And yeah, the, the Hollywoodization of things. And yeah, so <laughs> what I've noticed, especially, you know, just living out in France and detaching myself, like I have not owned a, a television for a long time. And just being on the outside, looking back in. And believe me, I grew up watching a shitload of television. My favorite shows <clears throat> growing up was like Family Matters, Simpsons. And um, yeah, f forget what else. I was in like Voltron and <clears throat> the old animated X Men type of shit. But mm -hmm. uh, just going back to what Jim said of like how things were more wholesome back in the days, like even like the fucking Brady Bunch and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people have seen recent Brady memes Bunch. <laughs> of uh, like even they, then they weren't concerned about um, the measles or, or something like that. It's like you don't need a vaccine for the everyone just you know. Just go to the neighbor's house and have a chicken pox party, whatever the fuck, you know, like back in the days when things were more holistic, wholesome. And and now, yeah, it's like the simulacra and simulation of just like the carbon copy fucking cookie cutter conundrum of, you know, a lot of other useless writing hacks that have just copied other people's ideas from past times or whatever, and just made some fucking slop, like whatever the fuck is on CBS, TBS, USA, or, you know, Fox, or whatever the fuck, and like, how many fucking channels are there? I'm already subscribed to over 500 channels on YouTube. I don't need any more. <laughs> I supplemented my shit with, you know, some other stuff. And that's just one platform outside of the bit shoots and honesties. But uh, anyways... So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the whole rinse and repeat week after week regarding just, okay, so the weekly program, and yeah, <laughs> I have a meme of Homer just going through the whole um, every day of the week and just having a more delirious face of just an emasculated man that just never fucking knew himself, really, and just got pumped into the some you know cog in the wheel of the machine of the, in, within the matrix and it doesn't even know how to like work the nuclear facility anyways this subject is so vast and, and this and that um, huge. it's hard to bring it back more to generality sometimes can i add something Derek, to what you were saying yeah, what go for we're it. kind of building on is that uh, from the shows i remember the the older shows i was mentioning a lot of the shows and even like a cartoon i remember a cartoon i watched he-man uh i love that as a kid there at least the older shows i always found that there was a a, a lesson to be learned so that's what i i loved about the older shows like there would be some type of moral issue or something that had to be worked through yeah knowing is half the battle exactly they and they were having, yeah. lesson at the end of every one yep and he was the same way yeah they'd have yeah. he -Man got stuck in the refrigerator underwater and yep. then you know the big back black guy that carries the um the torch the the uh, flamethrower guy yep. guys down there was in his barbecue i think something like that and he gets the kid out of the refrigerator and then he's like kids never play inside of old refrigerators <laughs> but that's so true Chris. yeah and he man he man at the end of every episode they, they one of the main characters would come and, and describe the whole lesson at the end of the uh, of the cartoon where we don't have that i don't see that anymore the limited amount that i watch i don't see that there's not lessons that they're teaching if they're teaching anything it's opposite of what i remember yeah i mean it's cool you were not trying to sit calm <laughs> and, and watch other stuff and i'm gonna pass it to you chris and just you know finishing off of just yeah we're just talking about a specific genre within so many different genres of programming on top of programming on top of programming and what the point i was trying to make is just yeah they try to build up you know week by week of all the commercials and the advertisements and all this stuff and just people just turn on the, the television as if it's just a daily routinely reaction and chris i know you guys had a wonderful live stream the other week uh, talking about rituals a little bit and, well, symbols. This plays into just like how they're, you know, the television is the altar of a lot of people's family rooms, right? And all this stuff, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah, you're kind of making me think about The Simpsons was one on the on the list I made. You know, I chose a few to kind of focus on. And The Simpsons, if you remember at the beginning of every so every episode, dun, 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 right? They're going through the whole routine, right? And they always end up on the couch. And, you know, if you think about Married with Children, too. Based around it. You know, it's based around the couch. Yep. And a lot of these shows are. The more you start thinking about it, they're based around the couch. And that's the whole thing. What do you do when you watch the shit calm? You shit down, right? You shit down to watch the shit, right? Um, it's a shit theme scene with a shit stream of shit teams. That was a little poem I made up. Um, but, you know, I thought about some of the shitty um, morals these shows are teaching and sort of cumulatively, they all do this too. And I, I mean, think keep in, in, in mind how important music is. Like when you hear music, it puts you back in the place where you were at that time, right? So we're mm -hmm. back in the couch, back in our dysfunctional family. And that's like what the joke is here, right? On most of these shows about the dysfunctional family, which is basically one way or the other, it's the destruction of the male archetype or it's the destruction of the female archetype or both. And, you know, the, the main shows that I was kind of thinking about with this, Friends, um, Married with Children, The Simpsons, Seinfeld, and The Office. Um, there's a lot more out there, but those five are ones that I've been exposed to repetitively. How many times do you have to repeat something before it becomes a program? How, how many times do we have to say something and hear a sound before it does get programmed into our head? How many times do we hear something before it does start to affect our thinking when we don't realize it subconsciously? How many times do you get into a disagreement with argument with someone and your brain is looking for the right words to say when you're mad or frustrated and where's it going to go to, right? If you're listening every night to these shows, people with their comebacks and they're talking shit to each other, that's pretty much you know, I'd say about 50% or more of what shit comes, the essence, the pulp, what it's actually about. They're either telling lies and then spending the rest of the show, like in Seinfeld, covering up that lie with other lies and telling lies to each other and themselves until they get themselves into such a pickle that it's hilarious. Ha 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 How funny that you told all those lies and got yourself into this really stupid position that you should have never got into if you wouldn't have told the first lie and the second lie, you know, but that's basically like what Seinfeld is about is telling lies. And then in between telling the lies, there's shit talking. You're either shit talking about yourself or you're shit talking about your supposed friends. And that's what friends is as well. The whole show is let's, let's make all the men act like the wussiest men you could imagine on the earth that have no backbone that don't, in any way embody the male archetype in terms of being strong or honest or uh, brave. Let's make the women have some of those attributes and then we'll make the men the opposite. And then we'll give, make the women kind of more male, like they're more decision making. So they're basically taking the male female roles and just screwing them all up. And then they're constantly all talking shit about each other through endless iterations, shit iterations, I would call it endless shitterations of how can we make ourselves and each other look bad because of lies that we told or by uh, bolstering our ego in a way that, you know, you know, all this really breaks down to something even worse. That's a little deeper layer and that's de facto Satanism. And that's basically what all this is. It's worship of the ego and being distracted by the most useless and mundane and non non-divine and important, non-important items we can think of. So um, some of the things I see in destruction of the male archetype, um, like Homer Simpson kind of shit, um, Al Bundy kind of shit, laziness, sloth, dishonesty, infidelity, low confidence, making fun of others to feel better about yourself, cowardice, and then like friends, women embarrassing men, women solving problems that men can't, making men look like wussies, um, men showing off with nothing to back it up, men being soft spoken, dressing feminine, worried about their appearance, tripping on their shoelaces, basically inept, lacking strength and agility, no commitment to things that matter, dressing and acting like females and stuck on porn and um, always single because they can't um, hold a relationship together. 
And then, you know, like they're doing in Married with Children with the young daughter, um, slutty or the mother even, right? Mm -hmm. um, completely obsessed um, with materialism, dressing slutty. The girl's too young for sexual content. People that are watching this are too young for the sexual content that's being joked about. Women are used as idols and objects. Um, women are like dressed in clothes and pumps to Barbie themselves and create an impossible image and standard that women, normal women can't ever hang up to. And then they talk about their superficial desires. They always make fun of the unintelligent blondes. Women's can't do males jobs or chores. They're constantly making fun of that to enforce that stereotype. And um, your job is more important than your family. A lot of these shows that I didn't list here are young children in big, fancy, rich houses. This is Disney does this every year. They have a new one. It's like three, four, five children of different races. Their parents are so rich that they can't even afford to spend time with their children. And so the children are like super critical of adults. It's like a children of the corn kind of situation. So um, the job's more important than the family. No one listens to the women. Um, the women are not feminine. They act like males and they're not feminine in either kindness or grace or gentleness. And then there's ultra sexualization. So, you know, I didn't have to think hard to come up with that stuff. It's just like right. boom, 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 boom right there. And yeah, you might say, oh, this is all just to laugh at. It's just to be funny. But isn't there other ways to laugh? Isn't there other ways to be funny? Is this really the way we want to laugh and be funny every single night as a ritual? Yeah. I think it's good, yo. And, to, and married with children, that was the whole show was degrading each other and laughing at each other. So it was, it was it, that, that show was famous for it. <laughs> based on it actually so that was the only one chris that i ever really that i like i said earlier i leaned into and watched and it's fascinating when i think about the show now all these years later and it just what they what the whole story right you have you have al the father who meets this his, his future wife in high school but in high school he's a promising football star and he's got like high hopes and he really wants to go forward in life and then what do they do? They bring in that he meets his wife, his soon-to-be wife, Peggy. And what does she do? She's lazy and doesn't want to work. She's a she's a hillbilly, and she traps him basically with sex and then having kids. And then that's the whole, you know, then like you described, the whole story kicks off from there. You have, and then you see what they, like you said, what they did with the daughter, Kelly. She's the blonde, dresses super, super, you know, slutty, I guess. Yeah, how old is she supposed to? Yeah, she was like 16 or 15 or something like that. When did the show start? They were still like almost preteen. And also Oh, absolutely. And they were dressing her even back then if you go to the earlier episodes. It was, it was it was yeah, really slutty for her age and then you have Bud the son who's basically a pervert. That's all he that's all his whole thing yeah. is. Is and it's just a it's a really wild show when you break it down. Like they really it's everything like we were describing what Chris was saying. They've you know, Peggy doesn't want the, 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 his wife doesn't want to work at all. She degrades him constantly uh, that he's not good in bed, that he doesn't make enough money. He doesn't uh, provide in all the comforts that she wants and just really degrades him. That's what every episode is basically. And then Al's walking around miserable. He hates his job. He hates his wife. He hates his kids. He hates his neighbors. And this is the type of show. And it's, it's really, to me, that was one of the really big shows that, started going in that direction that was starting to push a lot of boundaries i think yeah and i i'll just add something real quick and jim i know you're next uh, on deck but uh aside from laugh tracks did you guys catch the like when i forget the woman the young girl's name but when she was step on the scene it wouldn't be laugh track it'd be more like cat call whistling and that kind of stuff you know mm -hmm. like what's up with that and what kind of programming did that do for the young male youth since that time and how many women have been catcalled based off of that kind of bullshit you're right yeah and it's not to say like yeah. oh it's it's the fault of the creators of you know married with children no it's you know everyone needs to take their own goddamn fucking responsibility and look at these things for what the fuck they are you know art or media or whatever the fuck and also can we well, not jim's look parents didn't let him that? watch it mm -hmm. you know what i mean some parents yeah. didn't you know and that's that's the discernment right like should we really be watching this every night you know yeah. Sorry I interrupted Derek, yeah. but 
the responsibilities in the viewers too, not just the makers, you know? Yeah. So I, th I think the whole point of this, you know, um, conversation we're having is to point out the effect, right? Like the cause and effect, like the effect that these sitcoms and all like television are causing, right? So, and, and that it's intentional. So like what, what good is coming out of it? Like this, is this really like progress for us or is it, is this elevating the consciousness? No, it's totally, um, um, keeping us down. Right. It's, it's like everything Chris said, that was a great breakdown of, of all the, the effects that, you know, these shows are causing. And, uh, you know, I, I remember, uh, a while back seeing Carlos Santana just in a random interview talking about this kind of stuff and saying like how you know this we could just why are we watching all this crap on tv like he's like if he said if he had control he would be, always be putting out beautiful stuff like babies being born and like just like very positive stuff up uplifting stuff and that's just not the case, you know, this, this stuff, even though it is like subliminal, a lot of it. And just like I said before, and Rick said, it's like, we think it's normal. Like we don't consider like, gotta really consider like what, you know, this is causing, um, and stop thinking that it's normal. I just, I remember seeing too, that, uh, documentary, the century of the self over a decade ago and that really changed my perspective like once i got it that like that got into um edward bernays and how he's the mastermind behind behind like commercials and the influence on television and and also you know the, the shows too like how that you know affected people and once I saw that and got that, I kind of just like, that's when I really would stop watching TV. That That's it's kind of like that scene in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark at the end when he's just like, don't look, don't, don't look, Marion. Like, and, and, and they're the only ones who lived. Like, don't look at that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, the, especially with the news. Like, the news is, that's a whole nother. Um, but you would always get the uh, coming up at 11. Uh, on eyewitness news, you know, in, in between when you're watching those sitcoms. Um, but yeah, if you watch the news, forget it, then you're really screwed. <laughs> but <laughs> um, so I, I always kind of kept that in mind, like, just don't look at it and you'll be okay. But like, it, it is disturbing that most people don't even come to that realization. They're just in, you know, they're in it, like the matrix, like, don't even give it a second thought like just uh this is just normal it's not so i would probably just keep hammering on that like we have to stop thinking it's it's normal and just like take a step back and and i could probably the first thing to to understand is that we are programmable so for sure once you understand that then you can change then you can think about changing the programs so Back to you, Jerry. Oh, thanks, Jim. Um, that brought up a thought of when I read of the book, The Four Agreements, how we have these names, right? And it's like we carry them because that's what we were called. But really, you know, it's a human fabrication. And uh, we, so we get so attached to these material things. But we need to look within be spiritual and i just think about my childhood when i think about this topic i i said hey i'm not gonna be homer simpson i'm good like i can have this drink i'll be fine and i mean that's like a common thought though it's like that's what everybody else is saying oh that's not gonna be me i'm not gonna fall for the trap but we're dealing with master psychologists here and it's like 
we're mice in a test and they're manipulating us. So seeing it from that angle, I can now see, all right, I'm in some trouble because I'll give an example. I started watching Dexter not too long ago because Mark Passios, he brought that series up when he was talking about psychopaths. So I was curious to see a show about that. And then I, I don't know, I went, I binge watched about two seasons <laughs> and then uh, this was about last year, around last year. And then I started watching it again because I was on Netflix or I thought, Hey, what can I watch right now? Then I saw Dexter and I said, all right, I'm going to pick back up from where I left off. And then I binge watched the entire, the rest of the six seasons. Oh, and it ain't a sitcom then? What the hell? Wow. That's not a sitcom. <laughs> no. But my point is that I came, I wanted, I was watched, I was watching it because I had a good intention to learn about psychopaths, but I ended up sort of not being too productive. So that's like my point with these whole shit comms. It's what did I really get out of this? Like the reason why I was watching this was because, hey, I wanted to have good times, right? Laugh. I think we all want laughter. So I'll bring up this one slide uh, from Richard Grove. Or a matter of fact, I'll just give a, a quote of his. He says, um, comedy is when the incongruity which arises does not directly threaten your freedom. And a lot of these sitcoms are threatening our freedom if we get too attached to them and not care about the truth. I'll pass it to you, Rick. Good points, man. And I, I get what you're saying about Dexter and stuff. That's a whole, we could do another show just on shows like that and uh, reality, so-called reality shows, which I kind of talked about before we recorded, but I get it. And I just, I want to say to people like you have to, it, it's definitely mind control. Like, and I think Jim, you touched on that, that there it's programming. They call it that for a reason. And Chris kind of proved it when he said the GI, he sang the GI Joe uh, song kind of there. When we were talking about it and I could definitely sing the married with Ch children uh, intro yeah. perfectly. So it, it, it's getting in there guys. Don't tell me it's not getting in there at some degree. And that is very dangerous. And you may think it's just laughing. You know, you and you know, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, I just watch it to laugh. It doesn't affect anything, it doesn't mean anything. I'm just sitting there, you know, watching it to giggle and stuff. You may be doing that, but the message behind those laughs and what they're what they're getting into your mind is very dangerous. And you have to be aware of that. So well, that's who, all I can add. Who brought up commercials? Um commercials are crazy if, now. If commercials did not work. Why would they put so much money? Exactly. You know how much the airtime for commercials used to cost? I mean, I know the whole industry mm -hmm. has changed now, but used to be, I mean, that's what would fund the shit comms. It wasn't mm -hmm. the shit comms that made the money. It was the commercials. And how do commercials work? By repetition, by programming your mind. So then when you go to the store, you remember that fun song with the girls with the big boobs, and then you see the gum. And you just grab the gum and you're like, oh, I'll buy some big red. I love big boobs. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of that time when I was at the lake with those hot blonde chicks. Was that me? Oh, it doesn't matter. I got gum. You know what I mean? It's like so they, beautiful. Bernays programming kind of stuff, they understand how that stuff works on your mind. If you mm -hmm. like big boobs and the color red and it's right there next to the check stand and you saw it a billion freaking times every day for the last billion weeks, you're going to buy the gum. It's just how humans are. And it's the same way with all the subliminal messages and um, archetypes. Like I talked about the way they're shitifying the male and female archetypes. Mm -hmm. um, it gets into your head and then you get in an argument with your girlfriend and you hear the laugh track in the background and you give the same stupid answer you heard Ross give or whatever, right? You don't even realize you're doing it because it's so baked into your brain because you've heard it a billion times and you don't even know it's in there going over and over and over and over. And um, I thought about, you know, like, what are the morals they teach? Here, here's the morals they teach. Lying is funny. Mm -hmm. Lies are a good way to deal with tricky situations. Always avoid confrontation. Don't tell people what you really think. 
always talk about people when they're not in around in a different way than when they're there. Always choose personal comfort over all else. Always avoid responsibility. Always take the easiest path forward. Always laugh at others' misfortunes. Always look for a way to get something for free, even if you have to lie to get it. And practice extreme triviality at all times. These are the morals that you're being taught on a nightly basis. And this is a ritual because it's a worse kind of ritual because, you know, like when we think in our head of like evildoers doing rituals, you imagine maybe a fire and, you know, some sort of sacrifice, a bunch of people in masks, and at least they're making some sort of intention and they're choosing to be there and do that. But what most people are doing is just ending up on the couch, like in The Simpsons or these other shows. It's They're getting gravitated to there because the rest of their life is so lacking meaning and purpose. And they're, they're so tired and exhausted from a day of drudgery at their slave job working at the power plant that they just kind of like, fuck, I just want to lay here and zoom out on something. I've said it myself. We mm -hmm. all have, right? Yeah. Like when I have a hard ass day, there's nothing that sounds better than, you know, drink a tall can of beer and watch a dumb show. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I fall into it too, even though I'm conscious of these things, but most people aren't conscious. And so what's it doing to your motivation? in life you know the motivation that's taught the motivational notes that are um taught in these shows is only work hard in order to help yourself only work when there's nothing better to do or only work on something really hard when it's a great distraction and it's trivial and it doesn't actually help human beings always try to get people like you um even if that means compromising your values always try to get people to like you, right? Even if that means compromising your values. Mm -hmm. Petty issues are top priority. The more petty, the more top priority, because that's more funny, right? Always keep your attention on the very most unimportant things in life. And that's why I brought some of the pictures, some of the slides I made of, there was a particular Friends episode where it was supposed to be Thanksgiving, and they spend the whole episode in this big ego battle between the females and the males of who can win a football game and um you know trying to make each other look stupid um flirting with this girl in the park you know it's all really trivial um it's an ego battle and it's all based on sort of like a false ego claim in the beginning and a series of lies in between to make it more funny instead of okay we're supposed to be getting getting together and watching this for thanksgiving and i shit you not millions of families across the country that night were sitting there watching friends around their dead turkeys and laughing about it and not really thinking about it consciously that they're doing a ritual of you know becoming like programmed into satanism basically <laughs> hmm. that's really what it is um i'll pass yeah. it on yeah real quick uh yeah, and I appreciate you sharing, you know, kind of things that we've all been subjected to and have kind of just fallen into whatever in regards to like toxic habits and routines, rituals, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, like you did a hard day of work and you, you want to get that some kind of gratification and just, you know, ease back and relax, maybe sit calm after a rough day, right? <laughs> and, uh, with the television and the couch, it's already, you know, like you're entering into lazy city because yeah, that couch will make you slouch and I'm not trying to come at it like a grouch or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with the couch. It's just, you know, something made for people, but it's just the, the symbolism. Of it, right? <laughs> and uh, so a lot of these, you know, with the uptick of technology, you know, what kind of alpha waves, uh, times, whatever, have been pumped through these screens to the viewer of them. So there's other things, you know, metaphysically speaking, <clears throat> to keep in mind with these things, as well as, yeah, subliminal messaging and, and all that stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, you mentioned, you know, Seinfeld and this and that. And 
Now, I watched a good deal of, of that, uh, especially uh, back home uh, last year with my mom. She was a fan of that and like to have some kind of time with her sometimes <clears throat> when she just wants to relax. Uh, or like she's like always working, but just to have the TV on and just like watch something kind of like, you know, with that divided attention in so many different directions, right? As if television isn't divisive enough with our attention and whatever else that programs us to to whatever we're subjected to and, and to whatever degree that people take these things for and what i want, wanted to mention uh, at the tail end of, of the whole bundy situation is that yeah we, we can see the raunchy you know slap dick humor of, of all that stuff and blah 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 <clears throat> and we could you know, look at these things through apophatic eyes, meaning like, yep, I even felt this before I had some grand awakening and looked into esoteric, whatever the hell. I already, you know, understood, you know, sociology and just like, you know, human behavior on a pretty conscious level of just in looking at things on television, like, you know, who the fuck would do that? And like, you know, like, why would I do that? All right, I'm learning what not to do from these people more than what to do. But <clears throat> yeah, Jim, with the, you know, the whole wholesomeness and some of you guys brought up some things of, yeah, Chris, like what's the moral to the story? What's message, what's the message involved? And yeah, like knowing is half the battle, what's the rest, right? Like, <laughs> or is that, is knowing a third of the battle if we're taking it to the trivium, huh? Anyways, <laughs> good point. Uh, Griff, I'm gonna pass it to you because uh, it's probably your turn. But uh, I mean, GI Joe is not a sitcom, obviously. But uh, I remember Family Family Matters. I wanted I brought that up because I remember watching that, and yeah, Steve Urkel is just off the wall like silliness, and you got to take that as the grain of salt that that he is, or whatever, and not be salty about it, right? But. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or take a grain of sand if you understand the plan of the program. Anyways, uh, I love the fact that, yeah, sometimes it'd be overly obvious of, you know, the problem that in the plot that they're getting into and what the story is building up to. But you see them trying to resolve something at the end of almost every episode. And that's really kind of cool to see, even if it's can kind of be silly and stuff. You get that little, you know, sense or gold nugget of morality. And that's kind of, you know, what we're more aligned to. And we could see these things. And when we look at things now through, you know, more awakened eyes, we can just discern a lot better and see for what it's worth and see the programming manipulation, but also, oh, okay, they did some cool stuff there. Okay. You know, like we can have respect and respect is just a word to look back again. And if we're looking back objectively and being the objective observer and not being moved by you know emotionally where they like to pull up the heartstrings with the music and the, the dialogue you know all this stuff right we can you know just take it for what it's worth and if it's not worth that much just carry on right voila <laughs> mm -hmm. very true good points man i'm just listening to what you guys are saying i'm actually jotting notes down uh kind of just as we're talking so i can go back over it afterwards but uh not what i'm thinking about too is i remember growing up we had such a small tv in in the main room like i and this is where i'm just thinking like we just had this small black and white believe it or not tv very tiny and we all kind of watched that one tv and now i'm thinking look how big these devices are getting now like tvs now people want the biggest tv they can possibly afford they're huge and usually in multiple rooms so you, it's not like you just have one tv everybody's got pretty much a tv i'm assuming in their own in their room everybody's got their own tv or there's at least a few in the, every household and you know you guys are kind of touching on the the social engineers and and the programmers they know what they're doing uh and they've got this down to a science and it's and and an art form basically is what they're doing to people and it just shows you it the power of these devices to me because as you said when you said i think it was you derek they, it's putting you in a in a trance state so you're sitting in front of the couch and it's designed to do that and i know a lot of people think it's probably just 
we were talking about it like you just want to sit down and just be entertained and it's a little bit of harmless entertainment but there's definitely some liminal messages going on not just with the pro not just with the show you're watching but as you said the commercials and those messages are getting in there and and it's definitely it's so powerful it's definitely steering society and people and and putting thoughts in there that would not normally be there and chris was kind of touching we all kind of touched on it that it's a very powerful thing that you have to be aware of even though it may seem like fun and it's harmless and it's that you know it's not really a, a big deal it really is and that's kind of the trick that they're pulling over that's the the illusion that they're pulling over people's eyes and selling to people so i just want to add that in and maybe jim wants to add on to that yeah man thanks uh us thinking you know we're kind of um uh, dating ourselves a bit being a, l a little nostalgic when it comes to sitcoms because i don't think there's like any sitcoms these days that are like popular anymore that like that none, none like come to mind I, I don't like i don't watch tv but i i just don't think that there's nothing like that compares to friends like friends was like one of the last big ones or like seinfeld i i, don't know, I could be missing uh some of that but since like the um smartphones came out that changed the whole uh dynamics of programming uh and derek you had mentioned earlier couch and that triggered couch potato for yeah. me like and that that's definitely um the effect like that that was they wanted the cause like to create lazy sedent sedentary people you know like just get on the couch and be like a uh, useless <laughs> like that's the goal like chris was saying too like the end of the day just be a couch potato like and uh you know these days you also said like we do have these big screens but i it seems like kids prefer to watch movies on their little phone over uh mm -hmm. tv so like they're totally attached you know uh, us as well to these smaller screens at, that got us all day long we don't even have to um we don't even come home from work anymore and what become lazy sedentary people we just pull the thing out of our pocket good and point can be, yep. become that lazy sedentary person just wherever you are but um i was thinking you know since i the one good thing is like we do have so much more choices these days where when we were kids there, there was a lot less like it was just the sitcoms so and i know youtube isn't a great example because they can be um uh well, i don't know why i can't think of that easy word but um prohibitive or whatever uh what's what am i thinking of provocative uh, no like they fuck, they take your shit off sit down uh oh uh banning cancel <laughs> copyright what? canceled no talk yeah, about like copyrights they, uh, whatever that's uh, yeah they, they censor, do a lot of sorry like there but you go. that that's the point like so like i'm not trying to promote youtube but there is a bazillion choices of things to watch and it, it you can get um there's lots of educational stuff out there like you don't have to be a lazy sedentary person you can there's lots of ways or uh, other avenues or you know streams that besides youtube where you you have these choices to educate yourself and uh, like learn a lot more than ever before so that's better than like what then te television only had to offer like we do have alternatives available to us much mm -hmm. easier at the same time i think that's good i'm just trying to point out you know some solutions to being a couch potato <laughs> like and, and just again always trying to understand like that's what that's where they're trying to uh, keep you, you know, down, keep you down into this lazy, sedentary, couch potato, human type of human. So, yeah. also, uh, zombie comes to mind. That's that's a uh, something they try to cause. So, pass it on to Jerry. 
Thanks, Jim. I, uh, I'm still working on my active listening skills because, you know, I call myself wanting to jump in there, but I'm like, nah, just listen to what Jim is saying. Wait till he's finished. You made a great point about the couch potato thing. But now that it's my time to speak, I guess I'll just bring up the solutions, right? Like, yes, I already talked about the negative sides. And then this came to mind. Uh, I was watching Brandon's 24-7 live stream last night and Mark Passio's Fear of Sacrifice and the Freedom Movement uh, presentation was on. And it's like, yes, I grew up with the sitcom, the shitcoms, and like, you know, I got to let that go, essentially. And I know Leslie Powers talks about letting go about that stuff in her Alive and Thriving series. And it's like, I have to look at the, the shit comes from all aspects, not just what I want to see. So ignorance is evil. And just talking about this with you guys, I've learned that, yes, revisiting this, the shit comes, I've noticed there's, it seems really dumb. There's always, uh, at least from what I've noticed, there's one person that's just really, like, they just act like they uh, have, they're retarded. And it's like, they do it for, for giggles and laughter. And then one thing you brought up, Jim, was they basically, they want your attention. So it's all a, a war for attention for our most valuable resource along with our time. So they don't, uh, they don't want us to learn natural law. So, I mean, people are going, since they don't understand the foundation of freedom, they're going to be lost and watching shit comms and talking shit with their compadres. But now I'm going to get into solutions. Uh, I mentioned Brandon's 24-7 live stream. Watch that. You'll be, you'll be fact up. You will be learning a lot of tons. And I recommend an hour a day. I mean, I think everybody has an hour that they can invest in to become a conscious human being and fight for liberty and freedom. And I would also recommend uh, Benny Wills. He has a new community, but he, he provided a free community with all of his joy camp videos. Once I got censored from fucking that Nazi platform, YouTube <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, we, we have to end evil. So, I mean, you want comedy? That's comedy. And comedy is dying, I feel like. So we need to, you know, keep that alive. But shit comms ain't doing it. And uh, I would also recommend Grand Theft World. I mean, yes, there's a, there's a lot of heavy stories going on. But, you know, there's some comedy sp- Sprinkle throughout that, and even what on earth is happening.com. I mean, it's very serious, but you know, you gotta have a good sense of humor when you're doing this stuff. You can't just be dry and stuff. Like, if you look at my image in the One Great Work Warriors, I'm just, I'm serious, you know, I'm serious about growth, but you gotta have the sense of humor. All right, Rick, I'll pass it to you. Awesome, and I what you just said, Jerry, is amazing, and it fits in perfect to what I was going to wrap up with. And you brought up the word attention that that is what they're fighting for, they're fighting for our attention. And yeah, there are so many more things we can watch now, it's endless. I mean, it really is. So, my advice would be is you have to be very mindful of, of what you're watching and where you're focusing your attention. So, what, what uh, shows are you watching? and are you getting any value of them? Are you learning anything? Is it improving you in any way? Or is it just, you're just watching junk food basically for your brain. So I think that's really important. I, I, I That's what I've said at the beginning. I watch more documentaries than anything. I'm usually watching a documentary or a presentation by somebody or something that I'm trying to learn and improve myself and learn more about truth. Uh, I'm always trying to grow. So that's mostly where all my attention goes to. And I'm very mindful of that. Do I slip off the path and watch something silly once in a while or get distracted by something? I'm just like everyone else. Of course I do. But I have to be mindful of that and then kind of reel that back in and get more focused. So I th- that's my advice is there is incredible content all over. You just have to be willing 
to search it out and uh, watch it and put the time in. A lot of the presentations that we all watch are and so important, but there's a, there's some of them that are really long. There's some of them that are seven, eight hours long. And a lot of people, I've tried to get people to watch stuff that's of value that's that long, and they won't. They just complain endlessly about how long it is. But they'll watch a sitcom. They'll they'll binge watch a sitcom over a weekend and put six, seven series by and they're you know behind them in a weekend, but you ask them to watch something of importance for that seven or eight hours, even sometimes an hour, and they'll complain about it. So just be mindful of what you're um, watching and what you're taking in because it does matter. And I'll pass it to Derek. Yeah, it does matter a lot more than, you know, the symbolic Al Bundy slouched on the couch with half his hand down his fucking pants. <laughs> And this doesn't go for just like people in that generation in that specific scene, but I've seen this just in real life with, you know, like bros or whoever the fuck, whatever age, you know, like just like with their hand, like all the way in their pants, like feeling themselves, like, you know, talking to people in public, like what the fuck you fucking doing guy? Like straight up. <laughs> I don't get that shit. Is it like a posture of masculinity, whatever the fuck kind of pseudo bullshit anyways, like, <laughs> On the flip side, you got a bunch of nerds on Big Bang Theory with a small wang theory on, you know, what it really takes to be a man and how to be intimate with a woman and just like actually uh, be integrated and um, uh, in <clears throat> interact with life and other people. Like <laughs> you see the most awkward social skills imaginable on on the screens in this and that and like people actually love this shit. And I've just been wondering why for the longest time sometimes. And yeah, like, <clears throat> it's hard to like focus on. It's not hard, <clears throat> but I, I got so many different notes on so many different things. But uh, yeah, Jerry, I, I feel you on the solutions and all that. I just had to pause to get a laugh track, you know. <laughs> you know, like, it's like this weird way of, inter you see people, uh, in a staged situation the whole time i mean imagine you know having a coffee with your friends do you think you know the whole place is silent around your sacred little space that you know the the cameras focus on that kind of stuff like you know where there's billions of people on, on this earth and you know you see these shows and they're focalized on on these people as if the, they're the stars of of life even though they're do doing some of the most mundane shit and you know fumbling around and bumbling and mumbling and all this stuff and like the whole thing with friends <clears throat> i mean i watched a, a, a good amount of that because my ex-wife uh she learned a good amount of english from watching friends believe it or not she's from tahiti french polynesia and like french is her main language that's kind of why i'm here much love to her yo even if we're not together it's just uh keeping that heart light as a feather and respecting that love through that specific endeavor but uh yeah like watching friends i've realized like how many fucking porn references they had you know throughout you know i was watching it from like 2013 for a couple years and and with her and i'm just like wow like and these are supposed to be like you know like people in their late 20s 30s whatever like people living in new york where it's a kind of fucking cutthroat and, you know, but they're all a like hunky dory about stuff. And it's like, okay. It's like, <laughs> can you be more silly? And like, as like Chandler would say, like, <laughs> you know, there's a little catchphrase things. And so, yeah, like that, that's something I wanted to mention, Chris, in that last live stream of how there's like this, the parasitic language of how things have been kind of programmed into our uh, dialect of certain words and, and phrases and all this stuff. And you just see and what, or rather hear when you're talking with, you know, people that are ensconced in poop culture or pop culture, right. That, you know, like some of these shit comms. And you can catch some of that lingo that they're just, you know, spitting verbatim, you know, through, you know, they're vicariously living through these fictional characters, right? So we all really got to, you know, reel it back in of who you really are in the end and how 
you are in contrast to all these caricatures out there in this and that and we can yeah just see for what it's worth like i mentioned um and yeah recognize the the silliness we can respect some of the like hey like i'm not one to be able to create a and produce a television show are you at the same time like it's out in the public is it good is it bad it can be it's up in the air to be criticized or whatever. And the, there's so many divisiveness about people's, you know, fucking opinions about whatever due to whatever kind of ego attachment or distorted interpretations and whatever the hell. So I'm going to pass it on to you, Chris, man, because uh, I'm just going to linger on, on, on all this stuff and the follies of, yeah. You know, I was thinking about a couple of our older episodes. What, what was the one called that we did where we talked about the ego? What is the ego? That's a real old one. If you look back um, in One Great Work Warriors, we had a great ep episode where we talked about what is the ego. And then um, I wanted to point people back to there's two episodes on the dangers of compromise. And we really talked about in that episode a lot about how there's all these ways that the bar kind of gets lowered when it comes to, and it's all about principles. We talked about this too in society. And one of the ways that happens is through, uh, through the boob tube, through the shit tube. And there's really not much of value on there to be true, true, true and honest. In my opinion, um, you should be reading books, listening to books, um, documentaries and things that are recorded purposefully for a reason have a hundred million times more value than one of these shit comms. Um, you really nailed it, Jerry. I like how you put things there. Um, especially being in that kind of zombie state of mind where you're, you're um, entertained, like um, Derek so well described the roots of the word where your mind is sort of in a right brained um, imaginary kind of place. You're very susceptible to subtle comments and music and things that you don't realize are subliminally affecting you subconsciously. That's how hypnotism works through repetition and by applying to your um, right brain, you know, to getting you in that imaginative state. So being aware and conscious really changes that. Uh, be aware of the repetition of the music of the same words and phrases as these guys have, you know, so well discussed and brought that up. And then um, one other thing that, you know, Jerry, you brought up, and I know it's not a shit com directly, the Dexter, but it's a good example of something I called the Demented Hero. It's in all these shows, too. Um, they've been subtly doing it over the last 20, 30 years. I've been noticing more and more um, like the Sopranos. You know, the hero of the show is a vile person who's killing and murdering hundreds of people. But he's kind of a nice guy and you get to know him and the, the whole show is kind of from the point of view of this guy. And he does have his moments where he does sweet things. And so you start endearing him. But they've sort of subtly tricked you into looking from the eyes of the demented hero. And you can't help but living vicariously, as Derek said, through these people. And then if you're conscious and aware, you'll see how much more movies and shows have done this. Um, and then getting you used to ritual slaughter of people on a regular basis mm -hmm. that is ritual murder and slaughter if you're not conscious and aware you're just um part of it you're like um you're a you're a happy um acolyte of evil you know if you're just unconsciously letting yourself zombify into that so the solution is overall on this stuff being conscious and it can be fun to go back and watch some of these shows find the symbolism, find the things they're saying that are satanic, you know, and if you look at these things from that point of view, it, it gives you ideas for content. And I'm going to be going, as you're seeing in the coming weeks, in that direction, because I think it's a way to get people a little more interested. Um, now, we shouldn't have to sink to the depths of deranged and uh, the worst things we can think of to get people's attention. But um, that's where people are at. People are in the slime that's been pouring from the Nickelodeon since they were kids. You know, what was that slime they were pouring on those kids? 
You know, there were some pretty disgusting beginnings to Nickelodeon's mm -hmm. were actually originally little picture shows where they showed nudies way back in the day. So um, the actual history is not quite so easy to find. But it is evil and it is sick. And if you look behind Hollywood, you're going to find a shitload of people that are into human trafficking and human slave trafficking and um, terrible things with children. And Hollywood promotes this. So should we be spending our money and putting our conscious time and energy into supporting their bullshit? Or should we separate from that? That's why we're doing we're creating content that is wholesome that does poke holes in the lies and that does show you a way out of the matrix. It's your choice as a listener, whether you're going to um, follow the white rabbit or sink into the mire with the rest of the zombies and becoming a tech, you know, demented hero in their hypnotism of bullshit. And behind all that, there's another agenda, which is called the technotronic agenda. And the technotronic agenda is a future kind of like the matrix where you're all hooked up in your little machines and your little boxes and reality seems very real to you and all that shit that's going on inside of your visor but you're actually just like a boneless fish inside of a um a black box which really isn't too far separated from where we are right now especially since covid when people more and more are used to working from home you know the old days were working in an office you know, and I'll end it by talking a little bit about the office. The office is an allegory for all you people and what we're doing in life and the sad, depressed nature that almost all humans are in when they realize that they're partitioned off and cubicled from the people right next to them. And the best thing they can do with their day is think of jokes to pull and, you know, putting sand in their neighbor's desk or, you know, hiding your stapler, you know, and people are to the point of, you know, ready to fight over a stapler. You know, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. It's just making fun of you. It's making fun of your life that doesn't have any fucking meaning or purpose. Don't let that be you. You know what I mean? Look at the hero on The Office with Steve Carroll, who's the manager of this office, is constantly just lying to his own people and doing whatever he can to save his own fragile ego and uh, acting like a psychopath in so many ways and it's funny but you wind up kind of liking him and you're hanging out with these people every night these are your best friends this is who you go home and hang out with every fucking night that's a shame that's a shame shame on you if that's what you're doing really you know get a better life get a real fucking life get something to care about do something worthwhile with your fucking time and um get off of that crack you know it is crack basically it's just watching that stuff day in and day out so obviously i'm not too fond of the shit comms um obviously i've watched them and they have sunk in and i'm bitter about it you know and i'm filtering through all the bullshit they left in my head and i probably will be the rest of my life but um this stuff's real folks and you gotta be conscious of it otherwise it's destroying you and your family and your future and your children's future and it's not just the shit comms that's one small little bit that's one part of the wall of the matrix around you to build that technotronic agenda i'm talking about that if we don't wake up then we will be um enslaved even worse than we already are so um game on folks let's do something about this start putting out some content start being conscious aware and pointing out the bullshit where you see it instead of letting it soak into your bones anybody else have any last words before we close up this awesome episode yeah, I'll just say real quick, uh, Chris, I love the fact that you meant like it's really going alluding to focus and we do not want to have, you know, our minds and our thoughts being inundated by a bunch of unconscious miasma from the media and all these things. So, yeah, like we have so many different options out there. There's the One Great Work Network. There's autonomy, as Chris, you know, Jerry, you mentioned and, like so many different outlets of wonderful conscious content if you will to <laughs> yeah check out the one great work network got like brandon. 70 content creators there check out brandon spencer's live twitch it's running 24 7 what else can you ask plenty of good stuff out get the arc you know send send mark passio some bucks and send him a donation get your uh 
terabytes of videos and movies and stuff to watch for the rest of your life, you know? So, um, yeah, here's to doing something worthwhile with our time. And thanks for checking out the One Great Work Warriors. Jim, Jerry, Rick, Derek, thanks for coming, guys, and bringing all those powerful thoughts and ideas. And I hope we can... Um, I miss really miss having Brandon Spencer with us this mm -hmm. week, but I mean, hopefully he'll add some little part bit of his um, creativity to this. I'm sure he will. And um, we'll be back next month with another episode from the one great work warriors. Thanks folks.